Hey guys, what's up? It's Mr. HD Gamer 101 here, back with another video for you guys. And today we have another episode of Gun Challenge slash Loadout. Just in case you don't know Gun Challenge slash Loadout, is a series where you guys, the viewer, get to comment down below and tell me a gun that you would love to see me use along with a loadout. It can be a challenge or not a challenge, but it is a lot of fun when it is a challenge. So today's episode is a very unique, well, well not, not, not maybe exactly unique, but it is a very fun episode to create, and I think you guys will love it. So let's get right into it. Okay, so today's episode is the Battlefield 1 wannabe loadout. This is the loadout where I just set out and said, you know what, we don't have Battlefield 1 yet, but it is very close, so let's practice for Battlefield 1. So I had to do that in Battlefield 4. So today we are using the SKS with Iron Sights, Heavy Barrel, and Stubby Grip. Now we added the Heavy Barrel and Stubby Grip to provide higher accuracy, which would be a preset loadout in Battlefield 1 since they have those preset loadouts. Now we are also using the M1911 with just iron sights. This is for obvious reasons because the M1911 was used in Battlefield 1 as well as World War 1. Now we are also using the first aid kit which is very similar to what they are using in the Battlefield 1 Alpha at least. We are using the defibrillator as well just to um, sort of replicate the syringe from Battlefield 1 as well as the incendiary grenades to act as mustard gas. And as you guys can probably already tell, we are using the Desert Camo, the Desert Camo Camo, <laughs> which is a tribute to the new upcoming map being unveiled at Gamescom on August 16th because the desert map and trains and it's all super cool. World War I brought a lot of really slow paced action, but also a lot of really fast paced action. So in those fast paced action sequences, you would definitely want a gun that could keep up. Now the SKS has a rate of fire of 333, which is actually the highest in Battlefield 4's DMRs, so that definitely helps out in those faster paced action sequences. Now you also have a muzzle velocity of 490 meters per second, which is actually pretty fast for a DMR, as well as it has a magazine size of 20 plus 1 in the chamber, which is a little unrealistic in terms of World War 1, but that is what we have in Battlefield 4 because that's more of a modern time. Now in close quarters situations, you're not too bad off with the reload as long as you leave a few in the chamber so that way your shirt reload only takes about 2.2 seconds but if you use up all of your ammo you are probably screwed if you are in close quarters because that reload is now 3.5 seconds now when your enemy is 8 meters or closer you can do a max damage of 43 which means it's going to take 3 shots to down your enemy or if you put a headshot in there just 2 but after 8 meters your damage starts to drop off and once your enemy is about 45 meters away your minimum damage is going to be 34 which means you are still going to need three shots to kill an enemy or two if you get a headshot mixed in there now let's move on to the m1911 our trusty sidearm it has a rate of fire of 310 Still not too bad for a pistol of the World War I era by any means, but in today's standards that's pretty darn slow. The M1911 only has 8 rounds, being 7 in the magazine and 1 in the chamber, so really you've got to make sure you hit, you hit your shots. Now reload on this gun really doesn't matter. Whether you are out of ammo or still have ammo, you are going to have a reload of 1.2 seconds short and 1.28 seconds long, so really Either way, you are fine. You might as well use up all of the ammo and put as much uh, ammunition downrange and into your targets as possible before reloading. Now, when your enemy is 8 meters or closer with the M1911, your max damage is 36.6, which means you're going to need about 3 shots to down your enemy body shots, or 2 if you get that headshot mixed in there. But after your enemies start getting further away than 8 meters, you get a uh, drop-off which ends at about 40 meters, which at that point you're going to do a minimum damage of 15.4 which means it is going to take seven body shots to down your enemy quite a lot okay so now let's get into how this loadout felt to play after a little bit of uh, getting used to the dmr feel again it was actually a lot of fun to use you could down your enemies pretty quickly if you got a little bit of range 
Now, on some of the close quarter areas, you can still use the SKS quite effectively in those close quarter um, arrangements, but it would definitely be better to switch over to that M1911 just because you have a little bit more um, hip fire accuracy if you need that, as well as I just find it easier to use a shorter weapon even though it really doesn't matter. I don't know, that may just be a personal preference. I just find that using a, um, uh, a sidearm in closer quarters is better. However, I did use the SKS, as you guys could probably already tell. If not, you will be able to tell um, that I, in fact, did use the SKS in close quarters and had a pretty good time doing it. It wasn't too difficult by any means. Now, I played on a lot of different maps, ranging from uh, the new, fi or not new, but the Final, da final Stand DLC to normal um, uh, standard maps. And uh, they were definitely different playstyles on different maps that you do have to get used to. And we'll have to see what Battlefield 1 brings for the DMR, the Medic class. I did have to play as Assault because that is uh, currently what has the med kits. Now, the uh, first aid kits uh, were very interesting. You actually had to throw them to people, which was definitely different than the normal med bag, which you just set down and your teammates gather in a radius around it and it automatically heals. The med kits you actually, or the uh, first aid kits you actually have to throw to them and they pick up. I find that they actually do, or actually are a bit faster when it comes to healing people, so I definitely like that. I definitely got a lot of heals, about the same as using a med bag though. Now let's go on to the incendiary grenades. Normally in Battlefield 4, incendiary grenades, you don't find them used all that often. But when you do, they are normally in giant conquest servers to block off certain areas of the map. Now, recently I have noticed that the incendiary blast radius and uh, blast time has actually been decreased quite a bit. It used to be on fire for a lot longer. Now it is not definitely uh, shorter. You do have to throw it into a group of enemies at some sort of choke point if you want any chance of getting a kill with it. Now I did get a few kills with it just because they were sort of trapped in a little area that took a little bit of time to get out of. I was able to get a kill or two off of that, but um, in Battlefield 1, the, basically what we're doing is we are making this uh, connection between the incendiary grenade and the mustard gas grenade. So the mustard gas grenade would do uh, and would stay actually uh, a lot longer than the incendiary grenade would, and as well as I believe it would do more damage uh, uh, than the incendiary grenade did. So overall, this uh, kit was actually a lot of fun to play with. Unfortunately, we did not get any comments in the last episode, so we had to make this uh, up ourselves. But um, make sure <laughs> that doesn't happen again, so leave a comment in the comments down below what you would like us to use in the next episode of Gun Challenge Last Loadout. Either give us a really awesome gun challenge that's going to be kind of challenging and that will obviously make a good video, or just give us a really cool loadout that we can go on some awesome kill streaks with and get some awesome footage for you guys. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and hate everything about life. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more awesome videos, as well as a bunch of Battlefield 1 content when that open beta comes out here, hopefully in a few days after Gamescom. And don't forget to leave a like also if you cannot wait to see the new Desert Battlefield 1 map at Gamescom, as well as see how uh, Stone Mountain 64 does, because, uh, He's my brother, man. Let's go. Stone Mountain for the win. So, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. This has been Mr. HG Gamer 101 here. Peace out.